So welcome to the last session of the workshop. Uh, let's start with the first speaker, Alberto Gallardo from uh, Universidad de, Val de Valdivia. He's going to present an experimental assessment of loads exerted by solitary waves uh, over energy converters with different moon configuration. Thanks for the presentation. Hello, everyone. I come from the University of Australia, Chile. And I'm going to present you part of the work I did in the context of my final, uh, final project of the Master in Naval Architecture and Ocean Engineering in the University of Australia, Chile. So, did you know that Chile has the third largest wave energy research availability worldwide? Well, it means a very important opportunity for our country to develop a wave energy industry in our waters. Um, by this way, uh, reduce its uh, reduce its um, greenhouse gas emission to the atmosphere. However, Chile is also one of the most uh, seismic countries in the world, uh, since uh, its geographical location which I its cost is located uh, parallel to the subduction zone of the Nazca Bay being of the South American plate. So uh, its uh, seismic activity uh, generates tsunami events recurrently as a uh, as, uh, average uh, rate of one each uh, 14 years. And uh, considering that the typical useful life of a wave energy converter is 20 years, uh, the probability that uh, one of these devices uh, installed in, uh, in our waters have to face one of these events is very high. And as it is well known, the catastrophic effects that uh, one of these events could, uh, cause, could cause on any uh, coastal structure, uh, it is very important to uh, evaluate these risks when projecting the installation of these devices in our country. So, a uh, very good way to uh, classify uh, the wave energy converter is uh, by the distance to the coastline, because uh, this variable uh, highly affects the viability of a project, because uh, as larger is this distance, uh, higher uh, is the resource of the site, so uh, it could be better the performance of the technology, but also uh, the costs are higher uh, because uh, mainly the uh, cost of any operation that it is necessary to do on the site, such as the maintenance task and installation, but also uh, the cost, uh, the capital cost uh, associated to the the. Um, Marine and electric system. On the other hand, uh, uh, as charter is the system, uh, higher will be the tsunami risk uh, that uh, associated to the site since the depth reduction of the site. So um, it becomes uh, very important to evaluate uh, this risk especially in such devices that uh, take advantage of the lower cost of uh, its technology. So the objective of my research is to study the dynamic of wave energy converters in tsunamis and also to study the influence that the depth and the marine configuration have on the behavior of, of these technologies. So a brief um, introduction of the tsunami uh, these uh, events are, uh, most of them are, are generated uh, for uh, seismic, um, for seismic uh, events, which uh, generate a deformation of the seafloor, which uh, uh, generate a, a very long wave of uh, a few meters uh, high. And as, uh, at the, so at the, at the beginning of these events, uh, the wave uh, works in a, in a shallow waters regimen. And then uh, these uh, waves travel through the ocean at very high speeds 
and with minimum uh, energy losses. So as uh, this wave reached the coast, it suffered a transformation, uh, such that it's, uh, their, height, their height increased. And uh, by this reason, the nonlinear effects becomes more important. So, due to the complexity to study this problem, analytical, uh, it's uh, very it is very useful to use a model to study them, uh, which could be a physical or numerical model. And the most important variables to consider as initial condition uh, are the initial wave profile, which could be a theoretical definition or a real uh, tsunami uh, wave, and also the bathymetry, because it is very important uh, it highly uh, affects the transformation of the wave at the, in the coast. So the, the typical um, output of this model is to study the transformation of the wave, uh, the wave uh, structure interaction, and also to study the run-up and the inundation of these waves on the land. So the methodology of the present research is to consider a physical model by using the web plan of the University of Australia de Chile and, cons and uh, approximate uh, tsunami waves by solitary waves, which are widely used to study these problems, and study the dynamic of diff different generic models, and considering a simple bathymetry in the opposite side of the wave generator. So, uh, So the selected uh, wave energy converter models uh, was a point absorber and a surge converter due to the low depths that uh, this model considered. Uh, in the case of the point absorber, it was considered two different models which have the same geometry but uh, differs on their, on their moon configuration, such as uh, one of them uh, use a horizontal moon configuration and another one, a vertical marine configuration. And in the case of the search converter, uh, it was installed in a, uh, in a single position uh, without the freedom to, to rotate. So, the experimental setup considered a wave generator, a palletized wave generator, acting, uh, working in a piston mode, and uh, it was installed an artificial beach in the opposite side, uh, which uh, has a slope of uh, 1 to 18. And the depth uh, in the tank was 0 0.7 meters. So it was fine, fine five uh, installation position to the models. Uh, the first one before the beach, and uh, this uh, four uh, the first four uh, installation position of uh, higher depth uh, was installed the uh, the boys the uh, point absorber models achieving a, a depth reduction to the half of the maximum depth and uh, it was uh, considered a unique uh, a single position to the, the search converter model at a lower depth. So the detail of the installation of the search converter, uh, this plate uh, was installed by using two single point low cells, uh, one of them at each side. Uh, by this way, it was measured the force exerted by the weight over the plate in the longitudinal direction. In the case of the vertical mooring configuration, it was considered a uh, installation of the S-beam low cell at the bottom side of the mooring line in order to measure the mooring line tension uh, in its uh, behavior. In the case of the horizontal mooring configuration, it was uh, considered uh, four mooring lines um, such it was generated a symmetrical uh, 
configuration uh, regarding the longitudinal plane. And uh, uh, this symmetric condition, it was uh, measured the force on uh, the both the the both uh, mooring lines of uh, one side of the tank. So the it was considered three uh, solitary waves of different heights, such as uh, the H1 is the lower. Uh, the smaller wave and uh, H3 the highest one achieving a maximum height of 5.1 meters and uh, the experimental uh, the experimental wave uh, have a good agreement with the um, theoretical definition of this wave so in the case of the force exerted over the plate the search converter model as expected, uh, the, way, the amplitude of the force uh, follows the amplitude of the wave and was also possible to see uh, a vortex generation, generation uh, behind the plate uh, after the wave passes, generating this oscillation uh, before the wave, after the wave. So in the case of the Horizontal, uh, the horizontal moor device. Um, uh, in addition to the influence of the height in the measure forces, it was also possible to to observe uh, a very uh, high influence of the depth. Such the maximum force measure force is in the highest wave H3 and the lowest depth uh, P4, which is located here. Um, in the case of the uh, morning uh, line tension of the vertical uh, more device, uh, uh, the influence of the depth was uh, very slight. Very, it was a minimum um, variation, such that the, um, it, it is uh, observed a higher variation in the lowest uh, high. Uh, uh, small, smallest, uh, smallest uh, wave, and if we compare the uh, highest waves, the H2 and H3, it is possible to uh, conclude that the uh, almost all the force, uh, the variation of the force, is because the buoyancy, the buoyancy force or floating force, and not the excita excitation force of the wave because uh, in that cases uh, almost all the volume of the of the boy was submerged so as conclusion it can be uh, said that um, these results are very useful to uh, consider uh, this uh, tsunami risk when evaluating the survivability uh, Survivability of that device to, to tsunamis, and it is possible to see uh, to to use them uh, in the site and technology selection, and also in the mooring design of these devices. Um, also, uh, the the maximum uh, forces was uh, fine in the search converter model, uh, which. Uh, was uh, almost uh, twice uh, the forces uh, measured in the case of the horizontal moor device if we consider the force exerted uh, per uh, area unit. <coughs> and also, uh, the vertical uh, mooring configuration has a, a, a advantage over the horizontal one because the forces the exerted by the wave are minimum in, in those cases. As a future work, um, these uh, results uh, can serve to make a, a validation of an numerical model and by this one to study more realistic conditions such as uh, more realistic bathymetry and a real tsunami wave. And also 
it is possible to study the economic effects that uh, this result uh, could have in the in the marine designs or marine selection of the uh, devices, and also um, to compare these results with the extreme sea conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alvaro. So, from the audience. Um, thanks for your presentation. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's super and uh, not something that's obvious to everybody, especially when you look at the relative uh, likelihood in terms of time scale of the tsunami and the, the relative lifetime of a wave energy converter. Um, just the, the, the question or comment is in relation to the point absorber, and you have two different mooring configurations. So it looks like the core power device, or inspired by the core power device, is, is that true? Yeah. Okay, so they have a power takeoff that's connected to the seabed, right? Uh, so I'm not sure how the, the, the horizontal mooring configuration would, would work with that, because the power takeoff is part of the, the vertical mooring line. So, so that's the first comment. And the sec second one relates to, um, if the power takeoff is in the mooring line, it has a compliance associated with it. So for example, you could imagine that you have a linear generator with a translator and a stator. And the, the force that's exerted between the two of those is controlled. So it wouldn't be a fixed line, if you know what I mean. Do you think that would change your results at all? Yes, in the case of the horizontal configuration, it was, uh, inspired uh, in devices such as the uh, OPT boy. So it has the almost uh, the, the same uh, working principle, but a different money configuration. Uh, for that reason, uh, this kind of uh, devices can be uh, installed in, in higher depths. Um, uh, the, the variation that of the length, uh, the length of the, the line, uh, it, it was um, not considered here because the, the influence of that uh, is not uh, is not higher. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Avaro.